going to get that arm in a proper swim stroke kind of pattern. Yeah. Global running day, not global pulling day. Morning, Trainiacs. Mel and I have to drive off to a meeting later this afternoon, so I had to bring in the four-wheeled gray box to the office. I was thinking this morning that maybe I should give you a little sneak peek of my favorite drills from the drill series that I've created in triathlonterran.com slash coaching. 20% off, all of June, Trainiac, 20. There's my plug for the week. So my three favorite drills from that coaching program, new smartphone gimbal, have to do with what I think are the three keys to swimming well in triathlon. Number one, it's learning how to breathe easily Number two, it's learning how to float so that you're not fighting the water and pushing a lot of water. Number three, it's getting a good arm catch. And the three drills that I think are the best bang for your buck, if you've only got to pick three of the 15 or so that we put together are number one, holding the wall, kicking slightly with your face in the water to teach you how to breathe. Number two, corkscrew I call it, and kicking across the pool. Number three, skull tent. Okay, so this is some footage from those drills that we put together. Drill number one, like I said, what you do is you face the wall in the shallow end of a pool, you put your hands on the wall, stick your face in the water, and slowly start kicking your legs until they get to the surface of the water. All the while, you're breathing out really hard and it sometimes helps to hum. That'll keep your breathing out consistent and not choppy. What this is gonna teach you to do is it's gonna teach you A, to be comfortable with your face in the water, B, breathe out consistently so that you don't have CO2 building up in your lungs and that is what actually typically gives you that shortness of breath. Did I go A, B, three? And then three, it'll teach you the starting points of floating with your feet up close to the surface of the water. Drill number two builds on that. And what you do is you push off the wall and you slowly start kicking your way across the lane on your stomach with your hands overhead. Then what you do is you learn how to corkscrew yourself onto your back so that you can get a breath. What's gonna happen is when you corkscrew yourself onto your back, you're gonna be under the surface of the water. It's gonna take you a few seconds to rise up so you've still got to focus on breathing out really hard. But what this is doing is it's reaffirming how to kick so that your feet are close to the surface of the water, keeping you nice and streamlined. It's further building on your ability to stay under the surface of the water and not freak out, focus on breathing out. And it's getting you another step closer to being in that streamlined swimming position. The third drill then starts getting closer to actually swimming and it's called skull tent. I typically do it with a pair of fins and a snorkel. Kick off the wall, slowly kick on your stomach, and what you're doing is you're sculling under the water with one arm for the count of 10 all the way back down your leg, and then do the same with the other arm. And what this is gonna do is you're gonna feel where you have the most propulsion based off of the position of your hand. So it's going to get that arm in a proper swim stroke kind of pattern. And of all of the drills, I would say that those three are the best bang for your buck in the entire program. Now, Trainiacs, it's time for oatmeal and productivity, brought to you by focus and determination. Well, and while I'm waiting for yesterday's footage to upload before I do the vlog, the swim this morning, Pat is just being brutal with the speed workouts on Wednesdays. We're not cut out for that stuff. Swim's over and would you believe that it's just me and... Oh, I'm not long for this set. <laughs> you know everyone's gone, right? Just Pat and I left in the lane. Go figure. Gotta go make us some coffee. Pat and I might not be gaining any speed with this long swim training, but apparently we've got some lasting power. How you doing, pal? 
I am so comfortable. I have ample elbow and leg room. The Kia soles are roomy and spacious. I think that there's 20 cubic feet per sole. If it's good enough for a gerbil, it's good enough for me. Sorry. <laughs> This Traniacs, this is why I commute by bike. Seriously, who does this? God, I can walk home. So I didn't realize this until just a couple hours ago, but today, June 7th, is Global Running Day. Millions and millions and millions of people all around the world are apparently running, like Forrest Gump style, because they just feel like running and they want to celebrate the power of fitness and running, which I am into. Wasn't planning on running, but we're gonna go running. I'm gonna pledge to run. It's Global Running Day, you coming? What running day? Global Running Day. What does that mean? It's Global Running Day. It is? Yeah. What does that mean? Like people all are, the globe is running? People all over the globe are running to celebrate the power of fitness and running. If you're going running, I'll ride beside you. Nice jeans. They are nice jeans. Fortunately, I can't run in them. 186 countries, 1,245,882 people have committed to join Global Running Day. A distance of, let's go three miles. What's my inspiration? Fat rolls. And pledged. Let's run. The tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips. The Human Torch was denied a bank loan. All right, I'm warm. Family run time. They're coming in hot. It's global running day, not global polling day. I've officially lost them. I don't know how far back they are. They're on a bike and they're dogs. They're supposed to be the faster ones. Halfway. Where'd you guys go? Right up the back lane of Lindsay. Look at this goof just pulling like because as hard as she can second, to get me. The second she saw you, she turned into the sprinting champ of the north. I know, Grace. I'm the best. All right, let's move. It's global running day. You need to run. All right. Gracie's obsessed with me. She can't be a productive running gang member. Gotta pick it up at the end here. All right, Traniacs, that is about 4.15K. Very, very slow. 25 minutes. A lot of back and forth and walk. Oh, canker worms. From the dogs. So, you know, Traniacs, you know those days where you get home and you just feel like you're in a boxing match with life and life is Mike Tyson with a set of brass knuckles and you're a white belt? That was today. But you know what, you throw in a couple of the Fs, a little bit of fitness, a little bit of family, all of a sudden you feel better. Glad that you got out and did something. I've never shared this before, but my tendency as a kid was to be shy and be introverted. And I've still got a lot of those tendencies now to keep to myself. You wouldn't think that. But I find that sharing things and being part of the community of Trainiacs here brightens everything up. So thanks for being around. I think the dogs are here now, and Kim. What were they like? The worst. The worst? You guys were the worst? Come on, come on Pete. I almost feel guilty that I had such a fantastic run and they didn't. You what? Nothing. Bye Trainiacs.